So hello again, everybody, and a huge welcome to this very special webinar that we're having uh, with our very special guest, June Armstrong. Big welcome, June. Hello, everybody. I've recognised quite a lot of names flashing up there, so hello to everyone. Now, we're delighted that June has come to join us, and she's going to be talking about her new set of pieces called Take 10, which are all jazzy pieces. And um, I've known June now for a few years, it feels like, and it was so exciting when I first came across her music because I feel that she's very much uh, got a very original voice as in composition. And I know that I absolutely trust all of June's work in that my pupils will love it as well. And it's well crafted. So really excited, June, that you're gonna be taking us through your new jazzy compositions. Um, and I'm mostly going to hand over to June for this webinar. She's going to talk us all the way through the pieces. She's going to give us a tour of the book and play each piece. And I think going to give a suggestion of what the grade level is. And then she's going to do a little bit on improvisation. And then there's a little sort of surprise extra at the end. If in the meantime, you've got any questions, then please do pop them in the chat. And I will be uh, handing over to or asking June your questions on your behalf as we go through the webinar. In the meantime, I'm going to hand over to June and say huge welcome, June, and looking forward to this. Thank you very much, Sally. I'm absolutely delighted to be here on the, piano, the Curious Piano Teachers this afternoon. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to just talk about my new book. Now, if any of you are familiar with my music, you will realize this is quite a departure on the compositional front for me. Uh, what you may not know is that in 2003, I didn't know anything about jazz. And I took a course about the, the ABRSM jazz piano syllabus, which had just come out, and I became immediately hooked upon jazz and a total devotee and now I absolutely adore listening and playing jazz. I never really thought to write jazz music myself until, um, well really I suppose it was because of Dusty Blue and I got a lot of requests saying, you know, can we have more pieces like this? So I thought, well, let's give it a go. And I'm really glad that I did. Uh, it's made me rethink jazz and revisit it. So what I'm going to do this afternoon is take you through the book, the new book, Take 10, and talk a little bit about the character of each piece and talk about grade levels because that's quite flexible in Take 10 and just the character of jazz itself. Because jazz is a language and it's a language which is founded on rhythm and groove. So any piece you're playing as a jazz piece, you want to have that feel, that clicky feel to it, which you wouldn't have in the Chopin Nocturne. So it's quite different in that respect. Now, I'll take you through each piece in turn. And the most important thing I think about Take 10 is that all these pieces need to be played with that jazz groove. Very, very important. You can play some of these pieces without it at a much lower level, and that's absolutely fine. But the aim and object is to get a really good groove with each piece. So the very first one that I'm going to begin with is the first piece in the book, which is Top Hat and Tails. Now, you could play this in 4-4, four, four, but it's written in 2-2 two, two because it moves 1-2, two, 1-2. Two. And if you chop it up into 4, it just doesn't work as well. It's a swing piece. Um, I should say at this point that all the pieces in Take 10 are all in five-finger position, and that's why it's called Take 10, or with 10 fingers. There is no extensions, there's no moving around the piano except for uh, blues, if we have to move from a C chord to an F chord and back. 
but we're still just in a very simple technical hand position. So I'll play top hat and tails, and then I'll talk a little bit about the grade level of it afterwards. Ginger Rogers and sophistication and elegance with a with a two in a bar feel. And if you're going to play it at that level, I think we are talking at least grade two here, but it certainly be, could be played by a grade one. Well, the next piece is jazz band, band blues, which is a straightforward 12 bar blues. Swing rhythm again, and I would put this one about grade two, although you could play it at grade one level. It depends on the abilities of the pupil that's playing it. I've talked to quite a few piano teachers about the, the, the rhythms of jazz with early learners. And it, it does seem that there are two types of pupils. There are those who take to it like a duck to water and want to swing everything and those who find it difficult. So you have to use as a teacher, your own judgment about your own pupil and whether they can manage the swing rhythms or not. So this is Jazz Band Blues. blues. Now all the pieces in the book, well most of them, have a repeat so that you can then raise the level of the piece by going back and improvising. So there are three ways you can play out these pieces. You can play them just as I've played there as a short little piece in its own right at the lowest level. Then you can do it with the repeat and then you can uh, do it with improvisation on the repeat. So then we're moving on to camel train. And camel train could be played in theory by pre-grade one. It's not actually in four in a bar. One, two, three, four. It's in two. One, two. There's quite a, a difference of level in being able to do it in two in a bar and four in a bar. But if you have a pre-grade one pupil who wants to play it in four in a bar, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's all to do with what suits your individual pupil. It's a very straightforward piece. Um, we're just sitting in A position most of the time. So I'll play you Camel Train. noticed that uh, we have an anticipation of the beat in that piece, which can be challenging at quite a low level as well. 
one, two, three, four, and. So bear that in mind too. Now we move on to Panther Blues. And the reason I called it Panther Blues, there's a little element of feel of the Pink Panther, the Henry Mancini about it. This is quite a sophisticated piece. And uh, the left hand rhythm, if you hear the opening left hand ostinato for the blues. So that's quite sophisticated rhythmically, and I would put this around grade three level. So Panther Blues. Sorry, excuse me about the interruption there. Um, someone has started mowing our back lawn. So we're just going to see if we can stop that. Uh, it's quite, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's quite off putting for me. No, so let's hope it gets sorted. It, it, at the moment, I can't hear it at all, June. So um, okay, it's right it's in my ear. So um, hopefully we'll get that. Okay. Right. So that's Panther Blue. It's quite a sophisticated little piece. Uh, so I would put that about grade three level, but maybe grade two. Now, the next piece is called Straight Up, and it's not swing, it's straight. A very uncomplicated uh, little 12 bar blues. And I would put this, a grade one could very comfortably play this. which I'll be talking about later on is called Reflections. A very, very simple piece. Uh, the left hand just has a falling four note ostinato from A to G to F to E. And that's a great starting point for improvisation. So the piece is very uncomplicated and could certainly be played by grade one or even pre-grade one. talk about that one later on when we come to improvisation. The next piece is called I Don't Know. Now there's a piece by Thelonious Monk which is called Who Knows. So I don't know if he was in the same frame as, of mind as myself when I went into the computer to put the, the music onto Sibelius it asks you for title, new file title and I just said I don't know and wrote in I don't know and it stuck. So maybe Thelonious Monk couldn't think of a name for his piece either, and more of thinking of names of pieces later on as well. So it's called I Don't Know, it's another 12 bar blues, um, grade one, grade two-ish.
And then we move on to Summer Night. Uh, Summer Night is a very gentle little piece. And uh, it's a very simple left hand. We just have fists throughout. So these pieces have been designed to be technically not too stretching so that you can then think about the improvisation and uh, allow yourself to do that. So here's Summer Night. gentle little piece. Now we come on to Night Journey and Night Journey is, uh, many of you might know this piece. Night Journey by Gurlitt and it's a little homage which I, I quite like to do to uh, the Gurlitt piece. But it's a 12 bar blues, so we're going to turn that into a 12 bar blues, but it has the same feeling of the this continuous motion going through it. So here we are, 12 bar blues night journey. I think because of the, the sophistication of the rhythm and, and the, the thumbs in the middle, which need to be very light, I would put it around grade three. The next piece is Sundown. And originally I conceived it in 6-4, but I thought because of the, the level of the book, I would write it in 3-4 and chop it into two bars instead of one. Again, a very good one to start improvising with, very simple piece um, with a left hand ostinato. And that's all the left hand does throughout the piece. So, sundown. piece to introduce the anticipated note because all we have to do here is hold it on. There it is. So it's a good good way of introducing that note of anticipation which is so big in jazz. Now, the next piece is Carefree, uh, which is the hardest piece, I think, in the book um, because it's rhythmically very quite sophisticated. So I put this one about grade three. And uh, uh, I didn't record this on the improvisation playlist because it's actually quite a tricky one to improvise with. So I'll just play it straight through for you now.
So again, the thumbs are quite important in there, keeping them light. So that takes the level up as well. The next piece is another 12 bar blues. Uh, it's actually on C sharp, but that shouldn't alarm anyone uh, because all we've got with the right hand are C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, and G sharp. And the left hand is just playing C sharp fifth, F sharp fifth, and a G sharp fifth. So the notes are easy to play, but not easy to read. Now, Dreamland. Dreamland needs to go at a certain speed, and I would put it at grade three. Otherwise, it gets very stilted. So, um, I think grade three it would be reasonable. Uh, there's a lot of four and five going on in the right hand, so a, a good, well-developed technique I think is needed to play this as well. brings us to the title piece, Take 10. Yes, it is an obvious reference to Dave Brubeck and Take 5, but there the similarity stops. It's a very simple piece. It has a 10-4 time signature, and that's not really that difficult because it's made up of 3 plus 4 plus 3. So if you can play in 3-4 and you can play in 4-4, you should be able to, if you mix it up, play take 10. Uh, again, I didn't include this in the improvised uh, playlist because it, it wouldn't be an easy piece to improvise over. So it's just a little piece all in its own right. So here we have it, take 10. in take 10. I'm coming, I'm coming. Thank <laughs> you so much, June. Thank you so much. And um, okay, some people are just asking, I, I, I love that, I have to say, and I was uh, sitting there, I should have said this beforehand, I always sit with my copies and I write down everything that June says. So um, I've got it for future <laughs> reference so that when I come to teach it, I've already got what oh. June says. I love the, I love the, what I didn't know what to call the piece, because I do that sometimes in Sibelius. You sit there and you think, I don't know what it's called, you know. I love the fact that that's made it into the, into the book. And, you know, I find students love that kind of little detail from the, do you know, the composer couldn't think of what to say for that. <laughs> so, uh, lots and lots of really good stuff there, and I've certainly got a question or two for you, but Maggie would like to just, could you just remind us of the grade level for some of the pieces because she missed it? So sure. summer night, she was asking, and I've I've just put for our American audience uh, when we talk about grades, grade one and two is about late elementary, I would say, and grade three is probably going towards the early intermediate. So summer night, sorry, June. Yeah, 
Some and I um now I'll have to remember. Uh, yeah, could be grade one two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and the other one was sundown. Sundown. Um, well, you could manage this with a pre-grade one, a grade yes. one. Yes. Yeah, I loved what you said about that being a, a good piece to introduce that anticipated note. Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's a really useful to have a piece like that where you know that's kind of built into it, really. Built um, into it. Safe. Yeah, yeah, safe, yes. Carefree, that was another one. Oh, grade three, definitely. Okay. Uh, yeah, take 10. Ah, take 10, I don't think I said, did I? Um, well, picked up, Maggie. Well, you know, an adventurous grade one could certainly play that. Mm. An adventurous grade one, mm. I love that. Or a cautious grade two. Yes, <laughs> I, no, I, I still think maybe an adventurous grade two. <laughs> <laughs> an adventurous grade two. Yeah, yeah, you'd have lots of fun with that. Um, so looking sharp, looking sharp. What was that going to be? Looking sharp. Um, well, if you if you can get past the fact that it's on black notes, it's not really very difficult. Mm. Certainly, a grade one could do it. Mm. Yeah, I've actually written down for that one, you know, maybe that's one to teach by ear. You could try teaching some of the little the little phrases and things by ear. It might be quite uh, quite an interesting one to do like that. Um, OK, and the name. All right. Bernie wants to know the name of the piece after straight up. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know what comes oh. after straight Reflections. There we go. Reflections. Okay. Again, yeah. the very famous piece by Thelonious Monk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and I, and you said you were going to come back to reflections in a bit when you're talking about improvisation. So Maggie, take ten was an adventurous grade one. Adventurous grade one. Okay. Not for your cautious. No. Um, grade one. I mean, one one question that I had, and I think you're probably going to be exploring this when you're doing the improvisation, is you talked about, and I, I love this element, that you wanted to keep the technical side of things fairly simple. So actually, they can concentrate on the jazz elements, which I think is really yeah. important. And I love the quote that you said earlier on about, you know, jazz is, is about the rhythm and the groove and getting them to feel the groove. So how would you teach? some of these more sophisticated rhythms and would you be too bothered if they didn't quite get the exact rhythm that you'd written but actually ended up kind of improvising their own slight variation on it oh i would be absolutely delighted if that happened yeah uh, i have i've taught well i haven't taught any of these pieces yet but i have taught dusty blue one of my own pupils and she couldn't get some of the rhythms, but she did her own little jazzy takes on it and fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I had a, a lad do it for his grade two um, last year at some point, you know, and he got so into the improvisation thing. It was it was OK. You need to come back to what's written on the page now when you actually go into and, and record this in, for the exam. Um, and actually, he's the same one. The one he's learning is jazz band blues, by the way. Um, that's the one he's doing. And he, you know, the bit I'm talking about is bar seven and eight in jazz band blues, where you've got. You know, that da, 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 where you've really, really got to feel that groove. And actually, it looks far more complicated than if you just say, stop reading it, just feel it. Just feel it. That, that, that's absolutely it. I mean, we shouldn't be. Really don't need any music to play this. Well, I do, but <laughs> yeah, we me do. too, me it's too, all. me too. Yeah, and a, um, a lovely comment from Juliana. She's saying she's she likes the fact that there's a variety of different keys or modes across the pieces. Was that something you consciously tried to build in? Well, I thought I kept it pretty, pretty consistent and, and nothing too wild in there. Yeah no d flat majors or anything so um 
I hadn't actually thought about that. I, I just would have instinctively, okay, I've done one in G, let's, yeah, you know, move on. Let's go to C sharp. Um, mm -hmm. No, it wasn't planned. No, that. but it, it each one does have its own little feel. And although, yeah. you know, the, it's quite simple in terms of the keys or the modes, there mm. is definitely a good variety, I think, across, you know, across across that, really. Um, right. So how about then going into our, your next little bit, which is about you're going to talk to us about improvisation. Right. OK, so I'm going to be talking about jazz improvisation as opposed to all the other kinds of improvisation which there are and the, there are a lot so the the fundamental element of jazz improvisation is the rhythm so this is improvising which is being fueled by a beat by a rhythm and it's a language and it's a language which it, there may be i don't know if there's some of my you out there who have never improvised and if you haven't it is a very very scary thing to do but a couple of things i just want to say it's a language and it's a language that you already know because you are not going to do anything new when you improvise it's like when i'm talking i'm not going to suddenly use words that i've never heard of and don't know the meaning of i will use the words that i know and the same will happen when you improvise. So whatever you're doing, you've already done it before. So that takes a little bit of the edge off it. Also, um, it's, um, it's spontaneous and it's on premeditated and you cannot do anything wrong. And that's a really comforting thing to know because I'll demonstrate that in a minute. I'll do, put some weird notes into something and you just deal with them. Maybe you can do things you don't like, but that's different. You can't do anything wrong when you're improvising. So I'm just going to start off and I'm going to improvise something and I have no idea what I'm going to do at all. And we'll just see what happens. Now, I didn't think what I was going to do there at all, but you can see how the rhythm held everything together. And I'm just exploring and going with the rhythm. And that's the key really to improvising with jazz, that the rhythm fuels what you do. And you don't actually have to think what you're doing. I, I didn't think about it at all. I'm just listening. Now, the other very important aspect of improvisation is the listening aspect. You cannot improvise without listening. So I was listening to every single thing that I did and responding to it. So that's what fuels what comes out. And then I'm going to just take something like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I'm going to throw in a lot of weird notes and you can hear how the improvisation will hold together even though it doesn't maybe make a lot of sense. sharpened fifth there and uh, dealt with it so you can do things which sound maybe they don't belong but you can always then bring them into what you're doing so we'll move on to reflections which I, I said earlier was a very good piece to start experimenting on improvisation with and the reason is the left hand is just a very simple ostinato, the falling four notes from A to E. So 
if you can get comfortable doing that, and then you can just start and improvise. So I'm not going to use the piece. I'm just going to use that left hand to improvise with. thinking again what I was doing I'm just reacting to the left hand now when you take improvisation a step further and you're actually going to incorporate a piece to improvise over it's very like sonata form sonata form you've got your first sub subject your second subject and then in the middle you have the improvisation the development so when you're using a piece you will want to use the material of the first and second subject of the, the exposition of the sonata form. You want to use that for the development. So that's what makes improvising from the piece reflection different to what I just did there. So I'll now demonstrate a little bit where I will use, reuse the melody. doing is playing around with the original material and it's great when you can get to that level and uh, make it make it all up yourself but you're being very consistent with what you're doing now i'll just talk briefly about um improvising with the blues with panzer blues which is a great little piece for experimenting with just using one note and what we, we've got there is one note, but it's driven by the rhythm. So I'm literally only going to use one note. together and I'm only using one note. Then you can expand that to use a couple of notes. And so on. And then eventually if you learn your blue scale, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to just play around with a blue scale and you've got a left hand blues ostinato to go with it there. So introducing the blues scale. So when you're then that's at the back of the book too uh, for all the different pieces. So that makes a really fun jazzy thing to do. So I'll just do a little bit with using the entire blues scale. Just a quick look at Dreamland, uh, give you another little technique. Uh, one thing about improvising, you tend to feel you have to be very busy, but it's actually a very good idea to do less. And a very simple way of doing this with Dreamland is by uh, making the notes twice as long 
So you still get the, the flavor of the melody, but we've got a completely different feel. So I'll just very briefly uh, do the opening as it is. So then we come back to the improvisation. I'll go back to the front. melody but we're using it in a, in a different way. June shall I share that that score with everybody so that they can see what it is you've done? Yes absolutely. Yeah just give me a moment then I've got it here ready. So there yes, we go. You can see all the quavers and then I'm playing them as crotchets. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense and it's just another nice little thing to do. I'll just, I'm just looking at the clock here so I, I'll just talk about one more piece, um, Night Journey, the little girl at peace and another thing that which I sort of was talking about there was leaving a lot of space when you improvise. It's quite a difficult thing to do as I said you sort of feel obliged to keep being busy but actually leaving space is very very effective so just a reminder of night journey so when we come back to the improvisation little with the right hand and that's something else to think about as well. So uh, are there any questions? Okay let me just come and come and see. I was just going to say that whilst uh, we're waiting for any questions to come through there aren't currently any but um, June is actually the if you want to find out more and have more guidance from June on it on this idea of jazz and getting started with jazz. June is currently our guest presenter in the May box, not the June box as I originally put, um, where she's put together a four part course for playing and teaching jazz piano that you can just follow at your own leisure. And it's available exclusively to members of the Curious Piano Teachers. And I have put there, if you are not yet a member, then you've got the link there. And if you just use the code free support, you can at the checkout, you can get a month's trial after which normal charges apply, which is what I think they say. So Lynn's just saying um, lovely ideas for improvisation. Thank you so much, um, June from from Lynn. Um, are there any other questions coming out from anybody? I had one, but I can't think what it was at the moment. Um, I, I, I know what it was, and it's what you've just said at the end there, June, that actually less is more, do mm. less, and don't you often find your students get really, really busy when they're trying to improvise, you know, they're trying to fill up every single gap that you, you that there is. I mean, how do you, how do you help them not do that? Any suggestions? Oh, that, that's a good one, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Well, I suppose you could say, right, you're only allowed to use a maximum of two notes in each bar. <laughs> yes, yes. And see what happens. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, and, and I love that idea of just starting with one note, you know, just improvising, using one key on the piano and then extend it to two. And I wonder whether sometimes I'm, I know this, I can think of several students of mine where this happens. They have a preconceived melody or something in their head that is really quite complicated. And then they try and realize it at the piano and discover mm. it is too complicated for them to play. Yes, and too complicated to, for even their teacher to write down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So maybe by limiting that material, like you've just said, you know, maybe that's a way to, to get them get around that do you do you give your pupils any specific listening kind of um to get them into the world of jazz which on the whole i would say is not a world that 
they are familiar with they might be familiar with popular music and therefore you know they've got some sense of the the, the groove but not in the same way as jazz do you get your students to go and listen to pieces at all i'm very bad at that <laughs> i have to say i i don't think they even listen to other pieces by bach or this mm. yeah occasionally yeah. Um, they will surprise me um i had a little pupil and I, I'm not sure if you know the theory workbooks, theory fun factory. I, I like them. I use them. And there's, there's a question and it comes out with, they have to get missing letters. Spells out Brandenburg concertos. So I this little Chinese girl and I said, um, oh, well, you won't know what that is. And she says, I Googled it. <laughs> she listened to some Brandenburg concertos and I thought, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Something I've started to do recently is to actually put together a Spotify list, and then I share that link with all the students who I want to listen. You know, and it might just be wow. just a general, you know, just a general list of of music to inspire them. It, it's not just necessarily piano music, but other music as well, according to what level they're at. It's early days yet, but you know, I. I that's a wonderful idea. It really is. I mean, you can be very selective. You don't. You won't overload them, and uh, you can really open their ears. I, I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. I must must think about doing that. That's that's mm. a super idea. I think Something it's a summer summer holiday job, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Takes a bit of time. <laughs> Takes a bit of time. So, um, Laura's got a question, and do you? initially model improvisation in a general way before asking students to improvise no okay <laughs> Wait. no it's all just reaction hmm. uh, i know that you can do it that way but uh, it doesn't work that way for me so yeah. i mean i may strange I don't know but <laughs> I think if you use one note uh, that's as big a model as I'm going to to get mm. or give yeah. yeah I think at this level when you're talking about improvisation already here you know from the books you've been doing I think that that is probably what I would do as well I would say with with younger pupils who are not yet really playing jazz I and who actually haven't got a very firm oral image of anything in their head i might model and we might do a question you know uh, an echo to mm. begin with and then go into more of a question and answer type improvisation i think yeah that, that's a really good way to to start with little ones mm. is question and answer yeah yeah uh, yeah so yeah, yeah that's good. and lucy's just put that in as well try answering phrases um, and Lynn saying one of your one of her favourite all time improvisations for students is African Dawn, which of course is just so beautiful and evocative, and it really does encourage them to listen. Mm. Now I'm just thinking you've got a question to ask everybody, haven't you? So yeah. whether we should ask that question and give people a bit of time to put some responses in before we finish. Well, as I've already demonstrated, I didn't come up with a piece for I don't know, a title for I don't know. Now, I am writing another book. I'm really excited about it. I know this one has only just come out, but I'm writing a follow on jazz book to this. So I'll, this is what this, this is what one of my books like looks like in construction. So you can see the title page there, I hope. Mm -hmm. It's called Razzabataz. And it's going to be a follow on from take 10. Now, it's going to be different in that it's going to be a step up uh, technically, rhythmically, harmonically. And instead of, as I've done with take 10, there's an optional repeat. This one will have a fully written out improvised repeat to allow you to get the language of improvisation. So the book's well on its way, very excited about it. Um, but there is one piece in here, which if I, I have called it, needs a title. 
So I would like to invite you, if you, I'm gonna play it for you. So if you can think of something, you can uh, let Sally know. And uh, if I do use any of the suggestions, then the piece will be dedicated to whoever has come up with the title and they will get a copy of the book. So okay. here okay. comes, needs a title. So I suggest people you can either, as you listen to it, you can either jot it into the chat box because we'll have uh, keep hold of that, or you can email us after the event at info at curiouspiano.org. Thank you, June, over to you. Okay, needs a title. of a title. Now, I could add that I'm thinking of subtitling the book, um, I've forgotten, Jazz Moods for Piano. So mm. put your thinking caps on. Oh, we've got quite a few coming in, actually. Lots of people already thinking about days of the week. And that's interesting because I had um, a day of the week in my head as well. Um, we've got Dreaming in My Sunday Hammock. Wet, a wet Tuesday afternoon, getting down to practice blues. Uh, a sharp shuffle, just jazzing around on a lazy day. <laughs> uh, Maggie's memories of a more normal time. Chilling in the evening, seventh heaven. A rainy wow. day, yeah. A rainy day in May, summer in the city. Wow. I was thinking. I think I was, yeah, pink gin cocktail. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> gin cocktail. I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking wet Wednesday blues. Wondering about G. Okay, lots of, keep them coming in. I'm not going to read them all. Oh um, but, but keep them, keep them coming in. Um, oh, I like, I like that one from Julia. I wish. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> keep writing them keep them writing down and uh we can i'll send those on to june later on okay so june huge huge thanks for that wonderfully entertaining enlightening reinvigorating hour and uh i hope the lawnmower has stopped at your end because we couldn't yes. hear it so that was all fine but pretty disconcerting yeah, yeah, it can be a bit off putting, but thank you so much because I, as I said, I always get excited when you, you know, get in touch and say, I've got some new books and I love exploring them and I know my pupils also love them. And certainly so far, everybody is loving these as well. So thank you for your presentations and thank you also for doing everything you're doing in the, uh, for the curious piano teachers at the moment. Um, and thank you to everybody else who has come along to that wonderful webinar. The answers are still, the ideas are still coming in. Um, yeah. Janet's saying, where can we get it? That's a very good point. June, from your website, is that right? What, this one? They can't get yeah. this one. No, but you, your, your other one. Let me just type it in. It's junearmstrong.com, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. You can get it from junearmstrong.com. We will be sending out a replay of the video 
and it will have a link to June's site and also to the Curious Piano Teachers as well. So without further ado, and lots of thanks still coming in to say thank you so much, June. Can I just say a huge thank you to everyone who has joined me this afternoon. I, I did recognize a lot of names. Um, in these current times, we get to see so few people. So it's just great to, to link up with lots of you, even if it is through an iPad. <laughs> Yes, ab absolutely. It, it's all reaching out and putting our arms around each other and knowing that we're OK, especially when we've got beautiful music like you create at the end of it. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> so thank you, June, again. Thank you to everybody who's coming. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this on the catch up, we hope to see you very soon. Bye for now from the Curious Piano Teachers. Bye.